not acknowledge that I have come and I live under the yoke of the devil. I don't want to live. I don't want to live under the subjugation of the kingdom of darkness. I believe in power. I'm a creature of power. I was forged by power. I was created for power. I have been given power. If it will ever be, then it will be by power. You know, in my office, people that are non-Christians can, they, they will seize every opportunity to make jest of Christianity. When some people are talking. But not when, no. Not because I took Cain to threaten them, no. Those people there that are the actors in that thing, they had come for, to be shown some things that he is alive. One of them came, wanted to marry a second wife. He now brought the lady and said, I should scan for the presence of demons. <laughs> scan. Please just conduct a scanning and tell me if there are demons there. So, uh, he... So, <laughs> so, I've been running those kind of serv consultancy <laughs> services. Because even the unbelieving world know they know the the number they know people among us that carry God. To whom he showed himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, undeniable proofs, being seen of them forty days. Those guys were not praying to a dead God. They knew he was alive. They knew. Oh God, I pray that God will do something upon your heart so that you will know that he lives. You will know that he is alive. Showed himself alive by, by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and teaching concerning the kingdom of God. Let me show you evidence that they actually attended the course. Before I show you the content of the course. Maybe, oh my God. Okay. I, I will show you two contents of the course. Meanwhile, the contents of the course are littered across the book of Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 1 verse 16. Proof that they attended the course first. Before I show you the content, it was after the course that they implemented what we call the Acts of the Apostles. So, in various points in the book of Acts, you are going to see the course popping out. They are, implement, they are implementing something again that they got from the course. You see it pop up. So, in my study of the book of Acts, I was able to find relics scattered across the book that points to the training that they received with Jesus. But meanwhile, evidence that everyone attended the course. These are evidences of the course. Verse 16 is a man and brethren. This scripture must needs. Somebody on underline needs. That means it's urgent. That this scripture be fulfilled. The one he spake by the mouth of his servant David concerning Judas. When David spoke that scripture. Judas' name was not there. But after attending the course, it became clear to them that it was Judas that David was talking about. And there was an urgent need that resulted from the training. What is the need? To replace Judas. Do you know that except you understand the, the accurate apostolic orientation and the emphasis of the kingdom, you will not know what is needed. You will just be doing something called ministry. But what you are doing is not what is needed. He said, this scripture needs to be fulfilled. That's the first sign that they attended a course. They came with a realization of, of emphasis. Realization of 
what is urgent the realization of what heaven demands now second evidence that they attended the course this scripture needs to be fulfilled which was spoken by the mouth of David before concerning Judas which was guide to them that took Jesus for he was numbered with us and had obtained the part of this ministry now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong he burst asunder in the mist and all his bowels gushed out and it is known unto all dwellers at Jerusalem in so much that the field is called in their proper tongue not in English language. The name of the field, they had to look for an incentive word to call the field. It is called in their proper tongue. That, there was no word in the English dictionary. They had to look for who is an incentive man that can bring a word that is not common in their proper tongue. They called the name of the field Akaldema. Which is to say, the field of blood. Verse 21 is actually my um, um, 21. Wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from the baptism of John. The second thing that revealed that these guys were educated was that they understood the timeline that began the kingdom journey. Oh, 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 we, we do not understand that the church is progressive and the church is seasonal. And your labors are consistent with timelines. Meanwhile, it is your Bible that says from the time of John the Baptist, that's a timeline. Until now, there is a timeline that began with John the Baptist that is still very relevant at this time. And these people were able to pick the timeline. That the issues of the emphasis concerning the kingdom began in the days of John the Baptist. Okay. You, are you the JCF president now? Where is... Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Now, no, sit down, sit down. You were just a president for which academic session? 2017-2018. Now, part of what will make you accurate is to understand your timeline. You see, all of our service to the kingdom of God is consistent with what we call dispensations. What God committed to us is a dispensation. The emphasis of your ministry and the emphasis of the witness of God for a particular age might be different from another age. And in order for, for we to be prophetic and we speak freshly from God to every age, God gives us dispensations of ministry. You will not understand the full administration of the dispensation of grace that God has committed to you if you don't understand the timelines that are given for the seasons of heaven. As, as anointed as you are, your dispensation was just for one academic session. How can you quantify the impact of your labor? Because something was on ground before you came and you did something and then passed on the baton to another person. How can you quantify the impact that was furnished in your own dispensation? It's only people that are ultimately all together submitted and surrendered to God to prosecute the policies that are being picked from the heavens. Those are the people that enjoy God's best blessings. Don't think that you, because you can be operating the kingdom of, of, of God and because of your commitment to greed, you are willing to give for selfish purposes. That's not how God makes a financially strong man. The Bible says they gave themselves first before they gave their substance. God accepted Abel first before he accepted his offering.
if the kingdom is a, the emphasis there will always be balance but if you come and stand on one teaching I bet you a teaching is different from Christ so the body of Christ in the past few about 30 years have been doing teaching not apostolic doctrine because the hub and the center of apostolic teaching is Christ He said that is the secret. It was hid from ancient prophets. was revealed to his servants in the days of the first generation apostles that Christ in us is the hope of glory. That's the investment that God makes in every Christian upon which he expects you to prosecute your Christian life. The deposit of the Spirit of God. Your life of holiness will issue from there. It is that presence of the Holy Spirit that is on your heart that is the basis of faith. It is the Holy Spirit that furnishes faith. Your conviction, your belief system, your assurance. It is the Holy Spirit that does that. And that's the foundation upon which your Christian life is built. That's where you draw from to become a champion. That's what you live by until it becomes your life. So that you are not just changed, but you are exchanged. And it's no longer you that lives but Christ has become your life. His promptings, his stirrings, his beckonings, his call to prayer becomes the way you live. You wait for the next prompting. And when he calls you to prayer, even when it's not convenient, you are willing to let go, to align with him. According to Paul, that is living. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. He's a man that has lived Christ whose death is gain. Because there was nothing left to do. Everything was done. The world is not losing. He is a conduit pipe and he has been poured forth like a, a drink offering. He is not needed anymore. His spirit will live on through his disciples. The people that heard him and believed him. His spirit will live in them. The gospel of the kingdom is more radical than what the Jewish zealots were expecting. They were expecting self-determination. They were expecting to become a self-governing nation. But what Jesus gave is much more than what they expected. Now through your vessel, the kingdom of God will find occasion to come upon the face of the earth. You will become a partner with heaven. You will become a functionary of the dead heaven. You will function by the kingdom of heaven. And with the attendant an, uh, uh, um, 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 authority to establish the counsel of God. What he gave is not something that can fail. Because God that gave it is, is partnering with it to ensure that it's established. If God sends you and you know God that sends you, you can't fail. You can't fail. Because he's with you on the mission. We are going to pray. Is it true that God sent you? Because if he sent you, he will make a way. But if you are not sure he's the one that sent you, stay back and find out. Stay back. There are no hard places. Say, oh, a quiet bomb is hard. It's a lie. There are no sent men. If heaven sends you and you are willing to allow heaven back you up, he will show himself alive as we kick off this conference we want to pray two prayer points the first prayer point is Lord help me not to be a fake believer let me not be a fool I'm tired of being fake I want to be accurate I want to be resourceful let me not be empty beggarly and foolish give me the ability to go beyond self and be ready to surrender so that heaven can have an expression upon the face of the earth. Help me. Help me to see what you are pointing to this generation. That my labors will not be in vain. But I will be such a functionary of your kingdom that will be so wise and many years after I've gone, the things I said 
the prayers I prayed, the manifestation, the prophecies I gave will begin to shape the earth. I will live in my words. I will live in my messages. I will live in my prayers. My prayers will live on because a kingdom man walked this world. My testimony will bring admonishment to young believers because my life was lived by the Spirit of God. We are tired of preachers. We seek kingdom men that we model the life of the kingdom of God. Model the perspective of heaven. There is something that heaven wants to accomplish. Some believers will close the door to heaven. Some others will open the door because their submission will occasion an unleashment of the grace of God into the air. That's why we came. That the least among our numbers can become as strong as David. That's why we came. So that we can receive empowerment to colonize Jerusalem to colonize Judea to colonize Samaria and to bring the hand of God to the nations of the world we are tired of an impotent ministry Something that does not have the power to challenge a generation. Something that doesn't have the power to convict a man of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. We are tired of the religion and the routine. Because if God has sent you, Challenges will come and pass. But the testimony of God that you bear will survive every season. That's why we came. That's why we came. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. The heavens seek vessels that will occasion the expression of his will. The heavens, the heavens, the heaven of heavens. They seek vessels. They seek vessels that will allow an expression of a grand plan. Vessels that will become open doors. Open doors that will allow the perspective of God prosper. Saila Barata Mazeli Koboko Sete Lamen Komba Sika Brasketa Bahaita Kabarata Masobrehede. Lante kosezi la brante kom bahai koparata igabai to sonda iko dalamon sheke daliko bakabarata Amina bronde Amina bronde In Jesus 
name. Take your Bible. Can you turn Hosea chapter 3? From verse 4. Hosea chapter 3 from verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. So we are talking about kingless Christianity. Non-kingdom pastoring. Hallelujah. Where people, what they are doing, it has nothing to do with kingdom. And the Bible says that we exist, survive many days without what? A king. When you check the object of our preaching and teaching, do you see a king there? Do you see a king that needs to wield this authority for his purposes to come to pass in the lives of men? If there is no king, then what we have is like what Hosea is trying to describe. Say for many days, the children of Israel will be without a king. They will be without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image, without an effort, without a teraphim. There were five things missing in their civilization. For a long time, doctrine has been without kingdom. For a long time. It's been about what someone can get about the breakthrough that an angel came out of a layer of heaven. He has a bag of gold and he, he just uh, missed his way and he's coming to the end looking for an address, a place to deposit something. He's staggering under the weight of the gold and he's looking. That's the gospel we've been preaching prosperity without purpose. That's the type that a native doctor preaches. But when you consult a native doctor for money, they don't tell you how to use the money. It's just come and prosper. Come and collect. That's what Pastor Dan calls, what did you call it? A waste. He said for a long time Israel will be without a king. Says that there was a time that there was no king in Israel, and everyone did that which was right in his own eyes. That's what's happening in the body of Christ. Everybody is doing what's right because there's no king. Because when the king shows up, everything lines up, he will exercise his authority. Never in the history of the church have we had the kind of immorality that is looming everywhere because everyone is doing that which is right. And we believe that this global enterprise will prosper. God will implement a new policy. Yeah. Give me the scripture. Without king, without prince, without sacrifice, nothing to sacrifice. People are no longer paying the price. Paying the price looks like old school. No, we blend. We align. We confess the word. We speak the word. Name and claim. We declare and clear. Glory to God. So many assortment of activities can find expression when there is no king. No need for loyalty. No need to sacrifice in bringing forth choice obedience. No need for that. And the Bible says the children of Israel will be like this for many days. You can hardly tell what they believe. Next verse. Afterwards, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord. See, Lord is in plural. Lord, the Lord King. The lordship dimension will come. They will seek the Lord their God. And they will seek David. David there. David their king is actually pointing to Christ. The Lord their God. The lordship dimension comes in. And they will seek David. Their king. 
When will that be? And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. So one of the symptoms, one of one of the prophetic emphasis of the last days is that in the last days the gospel of the kingdom will be entrenched which is the ultimate gospel it will be entrenched in the house of God it was Jesus that said and this gospel of the kingdom if he had said this gospel shall be preached you would have added prosperity there you would have added success breakthrough but he defined the gospel he said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all nations as a witness to all people and then the end So if you know you're in the end time, the gospel for the end time is the gospel of the kingdom. The king will have to come and take his place in the church. Can we pray today? Can we acknowledge the Lord? I say I don't want to live like a vagabond. Doing what my soul desires moving from one tangent of pleasure to another tangent of pleasure. May my life be all together submitted under your majesty so that through my vessel heaven can have an open door. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. For some others, God will put the burden of some nations. Slavery, Rwanda, Uganda. But there is an assignment for everyone. It doesn't matter where you walk. That's your walk. That's your job. But your calling is your walk.